I went into much deeper shock as I realized it appeared he was demanding sexual favors or sexual behaviors. I decided to clear. I got so freaked I just got... I got a tiny bit mad under my terror. I decided to clarify things by asking him, as he angrily complained that I was not doing what he wanted, for him to show me exactly what he wanted me to do, such as where I'm such. I said, well, why don't you show me? Because I thought, this is too nuts. He grabbed my right hand hard, shoved it down under the sheet to his pubic hair area, my fingers brushing against his penis, and firmly planted my hand on his pubic crest region and said to me, there, in a very sharp, loud, angry sounding tone. This is all happening really fast, as you can imagine. Further yet into shock from both his demand and his angry, intimidating behavior, I subtly and slowly slid my hand up away from the area and told him it would be a counterproductive massage technique, as he had said that he'd wanted to unwind from stress and relax and that it would get him too awake, I said euphemistically and diplomatically. I felt like I was dancing on the edge of a razor. He angrily raged in an accusatory and threatening confrontational tone. He, he bellowed at me. I had no idea. And I, I've never had a client yell at me, except for one who was brain injured and she was drunk and she, I work with her all the time. She's a mess, but she's like five feet tall and she'll cry. Okay, so he, he screamed at me. He goes, I'm not asking, imagine yelling. I'm not asking for you to do anything inappropriate. To which I replied in a softer, terrified, calming tone, no impropriety was inferred, sir. At this point, I was realizing just how crazy and insidious he was and how precarious my situation was when he said the aforementioned, even though he clearly wanted inappropriate touch. It's like to make your mind go nuts. He was moaning, groaning, moving, and acting in a very suggestive way. It was unreal. I never even had any of my hotel clients get angry, yell, or act out at me before. During the massage episode, I realized much to my horror that I was in the perfect storm and that I was in a room with someone who was Teflon coated in terms of his credibility and celebrity status and my usual safety net idea in all hotel massages before this of being able to escape from such a potential situation of perverted or threatening behavior from a client, which would be terminate the massage and leave the room immediately for help from the front hotel desk even running and or shouting for help in the hallway if deemed necessary, was completely worthless in this situation. It was no longer viable because I feared that if I ran for the door to get out, I could or would be violently accosted by some security detail for seeming to be hostile, inappropriate, insubordinate, or threatening to him, and I feared being tased or shot by them as a first and immediate response. I also feared that if I made dissent with Gore, I could be in danger of being falsely arrested for false allegations of alleged soliciting or even attempted assault in his efforts to do damage control. And I felt certain that any, even the smallest complaint from him to the hotel could also destroy my work life reputation in all the hotels and hence do irreparable damage to my livelihood, not to mention damage my personal reputation, which I had spent years building with my livelihood. I felt very uncertain if I'd be able to get out of the room without being accosted by him anyway at this point. Does that all make sense to y'all? Mm -hmm. He then tried another tactic as though he had very suddenly switched personalities and began in a pleading tone pleading for release of his second chakra there. There's so much tension being held. This was yet another euphemism for sexual activity he was requesting, put cleverly as though it were a spiritual request or something. I was further deeply shocked and repulsed as my realization of what was happening sunk in, and especially as my mind was now reeling from this absolute betrayal by someone I had inherently trusted as a good guy who cares about people, including me, because of his public persona. You know? When I came out, he was in his robe and he complimented me on the session. I felt I could leave without further problems from him, but I was wrong in that surmising. I was freaked out and trying to act calm and collected so as not to look vulnerable and so as to keep any other weirdness from him from happening. He engaged me in small talk as I headed for my massage table to break it down, and he came over to where I was 
while I was trying to pack up. And then he wrapped me in an inescapable embrace as I turned around, giving this come hither look deep into my eyes and caressed my back and buttocks and breasts. I squirmed to try and get out of his grasp, telling him to stop down several times, and I finally told him and said, you're being a crazy sex poodle hoping that he'd realize how weird he was being, yet he persisted. He was much stronger than me, bigger than me, and insistent. It was completely unnerving, and I realized that resistance was making him giggle and pursue more strongly. And I knew then that this resistance was a dangerous tactic to use if I wanted to avoid being raped. I had the fear that rape would be inevitable if I could not get out of the room, yet I could see no way to immediately leave without it also being a risk to my safety okay. because I felt he would use force to counter... It goes on forever, but we've got the full multi-hour interview. We've got a 23-minute boil down. You can go hear this for yourself as he begins chasing her around with an erection. We don't normally talk about stuff like this on the show, but we've got cops reportedly raping women up at the uh, G20. We've got the vice president, the, the former vice president reportedly doing this, and it fits his M.O. to a T. We've got a new police investigation, so we have to play part of it. It gets too graphic. I've, I've, I've made the decision not to play any more uh, of the video because he starts running around with an erection outside of his robe, humping on her as she goes out the door, showing her condoms, saying, why are there condoms in this hotel room? This is a hotel room that supplies me this. And I was on a road trip once, and I remember we were like in Nevada somewhere in the middle of nowhere on a college road trip. And we were sitting around joking in the room, drinking beer and smoking cigarettes. And we're like, why does it say push here for massage? And one of the guys jokes and goes, this is Nevada. They probably send a whore to your room. And later I found out that's what that is. And so I think Al Gore must check into these super ritzy places and thought he was conked. Because later in the tape, he goes, this is Oriental Massage. And I, you know, in downtown Austin, they got places like Midnight Cowboy or and the you know, Oriental Massage. and uh, Or now they're called Lingerie Modeling. And I've never been in one. But the word is uh, you get a little... Well, actually, I probably get four or five massages a year. And a couple times, and I didn't know what it meant, women giving me massages, and I don't like a man touching me, they would ask, have you ever heard of a happy ending? It's not about justice. It's not about agenda. It's not about mobilizing people. It's about dialing for corporate dollars. These two parties have sold the U.S. government and the American people to the highest bidders.